Fuck Dropbox. Fuck Dropbox. I don't like Dropbox. I'm Robert Evans. This is Behind the Bastards, a podcast where I don't like Dropbox very much. And also I talk about the worst people in all of history, some of whom are the folks who make Dropbox because it has stopped working. It used to work fine. It used to work great. It used to be easy to just drag and drop shit, share it. Now it's a giant pain in the ass every time we need to use it. Uh, so I don't know. Am I saying that people should go out and commit crimes against Dropbox corporate property? Yes. Perhaps. Yes, I am. I am specifically and legally actionably urging people to do that. This has been my um, favorite intro of yours, Robert. Thank you. Thank that's, you. That's what we need. Go out and crime, my children. Go out and crime. Anti Dropbox action. Yeah, exactly. ADA, baby. I got that tattoo right on my chest. Um, our guest today is the same as our guest in part one, uh, Garrison Davis, who is actually our reversed guest, uh, and I am the guest on my own podcast, learning about the rise above movement. Ram. Yay, and now the not Ram, the... The Nam, yeah. The Raminants of... Ha <laughs> Yeah, oh, the, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, no, that was good. That was good. You got to lean into shit like that, Garrison. Never admit, never admit mistakes. That wasn't a mistake. That was a, that was a pun. Puns are never mistakes. Okay. Except when exactly. they are. Okay. Um. Anyway, when we when we last, hi, it's Garrison again from the Twitter and podcast or whatever. Um, when we last left off, uh, four Ram members got convicted for their violent actions in Charlottesville, and another four got their charges dropped. Um, chief among them was Ram co- co-founder and leader Robert Rundo. Um, when when let when let out of jail in uh, 2019 in uh, June, he decided to flee to Eastern Europe on more of those extended vacations. So he so he, he gets out of, he gets out of jail. He's not super thrilled about law enforcement. Um, and never n- like never actually is, which we'll talk more about later. But he decides to leave the states because he thinks that if he gets in the states, he'll just get into more trouble. Um, so he goes to Eastern Europe, where he tries to build up uh, a media slash clothing brand of athletic lifestyle fascism, which uh, that kind of stuff has a lot of established roots in that area um, mm-hmm. in the whole section of the world. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, Ukraine is huge with that shit. Yeah, yeah, and all and all, of these, all all of these France, Europe, yeah. France, um, Russia, of all of that, all of that yeah. stuff has a lot of a lot of this kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. But this isn't the first time he actually would attempt to do something like this. Um, Remember in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, uh, ProPublica thing, and in the, with the, when they interviewed the Ram member, the Ram, got, Ram member said that they wanted to stop going to rallies as much um, after they, you know, someone after they murdered someone in Charlottesville. Um, so af- after after that, with the right coming under a whole bunch of more scrutiny um, for like kind of the first time, because um, again they killed someone in broad daylight. Um, the, the the Rams' violent actions got put on a little little bit of a pause, mm. um, and uh, so they stopped doing in-person rallies as much, and they started instead by focusing on building a fashy lifestyle MMA clothing brand here in the states, um, in in lieu of their white nationalist MMA uh, clubs and clothing brand inspirations like the Russian-based White Rex, um, Thor's Steiner, which is another one based in Germany. Um, which we'll get into a little, little, little bit more in a bit. Um, and yeah, there's a, there's one in uh, France too, but I forget its name. Um, so in, uh, in January 20, 2018, Rob Rundo and Ram secretly started the quote, the right brand clothing company. I say, I say secretly because at the time no one knew it was associated with Ram um, and nothing on their website was tied to Ram except all of the models for their clothing products was all Ram members. <laughs> so if you were like following the anti anti racist action stuff, you could like be like, oh, this is the same dude posing in these photos for this. This is they're probably the same people. And eventually, we found out like they were. They were. It was the same guys doing uh, like running both. Um, the right brand's motto was style identity revolt, which is um, yeah. Anyway, um, any any kind of regular Republican or conservative, and probably even some liberals wouldn't find much of a problem with their site or products. Um, it wasn't super explicit about white supremacy as later branding attempts would be, but the now defunct uh, website is riddled with dog whistles. Um, the homepage builds itself as a nationalist apparel company committed to bringing you the highest quality goods. Our products are designed both for casual and active lifestyles made for our people by our people. So again, that's, you know, our, our people, quote unquote, meaning, meaning, 
meeting white people. Um, they, uh, th their website's actually kind of, it's kind, it's kind of a hoot to, to scroll around on because it's very stupid. Um, <laughs> and they, 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 they fall into. <laughs> oh, okay. That was so precious. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, the about <laughs> section of their website reads, "quote um, the the right brand was founded by a mix of frontline patriots from all around America <laughs> that wanted to take part in creating a counterculture to the Marxist and degenerate ideals that are constantly being forced upon us from big corporate Hollywood and media and liberal campuses." So note note on their grammar there. I'm not correcting their grammar from the website. I'm just doing one for one. I just um, want to point out that you went full Canada in that a boat section and yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed and, it. Can it be even more white than they are? Um, <laughs> just how, it's, that's, that's the only way to take them down. Um, you got to go. You got to go even whiter. <laughs> I'm having you got to burn time. all of your salt. <laughs> Throw your pepper in the sea. <laughs> uh, continuing their about section. Um, <laughs> modeling after successful European patri uh, patriotic and nationalist movements, we created a coalition of apparel and accessories based on these concepts. All of the founders are young activists that uh, have been at some has some, have been at some of the biggest events in around the country and have personally been on the front page for their boldness and stood against the waves of the left. At the right brand clothing, we have gone out of our, gone out of our way to reach out to companies and movements in Europe that are engaged in the same battles we are. We procured a selection of their products and have made them available for sale here in the United States. This helps keep um, slash our guys slash employed and able to sustain their struggle against the European Union and other sub sub subversive forces. Um, so slash our slash is a white nationalist dog missile for being like someone being a Nazi, essentially, um, which you know it's, that started on 4chan, right, Robert? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the the slash R thing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's I mean, as far as I know, that's where that started. Like, OK, it's, with Internet culture, like who the hell? Like I, 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 I haven't at like, least got popularized on 4chan. Back, from yeah, what I can yeah, tell. it got it got popularized on the chance for sure. Um, the, the right brand prides itself on having a, quote, ethical supply chain. Quote, our supply chain is free from forced, unpaid labor, child labor, and human trafficking. We are also committed to sourcing only from companies and individuals who share slash our values slash. When oh, we boy. purchase yeah. products from Europe, we are supporting families and communities that believe in traditional values. Though American fiscal support, uh, through American fiscal support, we are furthering our mutual shared ideals. To us, ethically sourcing materials and services uh, also includes us not giving any money to our shared enemies or those who do not align with slash our values slash. So they're not even being that subtle because they're putting the slashes in there. Um, so I, I don't I don't know what quite their audience was for this. Um, I mean, their company did not last too long, partially because a lot of their members got charges and were sent to jail during, you know, before their trials. Mm. Um but they never got super popular. Um, they never their clothing company never really took off. Um, the products themselves are kind of just pretty basic athletic gear with various designs on them. Um, some are adorned with like Viking imagery and runic letters. Other shirts read Alpine Division. Um, they they had they had an anti communist action shirt with crossed rifles. Um, <laughs> one, one, one of their one of their popular designs says Revolt Against Modern. Which is a little uh, Julius Evola reference, which I will talk more about later. Um, under a section titled Activism, they sell fuck Antifa stickers and modern white youth stickers. So the stickers are a little bit more explicit about what, what they're doing. Um, the, uh, the modern white youth stickers uh, depicts the dangers of rap, feminism, homosexuality, third world immigration, white guilt, cultural Marxism, communism, drugs, and, de and, and degeneracy being forced onto young white people. It's a weird design. I don't know how to describe it besides just that. It's like these things are getting like fed into this young white person's mouth or whatever. Very silly. Um, and yeah, honestly, it sounds like a fucking white Aryan resistance comic from the 1990s. Honestly, kind of based. Rap, yeah. feminism, homosexuality, third world immigration, white guilt, cultural Marxism, communism, drugs, and, de and de degeneracy. Not all terrible. I mean, most of those are actually pretty fine. Oh, um, yeah, I'm a big fan of degeneracy. <laughs> so, honestly, I would not protest if this was getting injected into me. Um, mm -hmm. 
let's see. Uh, the the uh, right brand's goal was to both set up an American version of White Rex in the within the style of you know the MMA white nationalist um, lifestyle brand to help spread their propaganda and recruit young men. Um, but also, it was to get the guys at Ram a job. Um, because they all kind of got in trouble and their tree trimming business kind of fell apart after Charlottesville. Um, so they started this to kind of try to keep themselves employed. So that's pretty funny. Um, the, the, uh, to, to be fair, um, the right brand was kind of semi-open about where their funds were going. Um, they broke it down into four sections on their website. Um, sp- uh, one section read, Sponsorship! We here at The Right Brand believe in healthy, uh, believe heavily in athleticism for today's youth as a way to fight against the left's onslaught of degeneracy and drug culture that they promote. We need a youth that is strong in their mental and physical capabilities to lead our, to lead our way. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to read the rest of it. Um, they're, they're, ta- they're talking about sponsoring athletes with gear and clothing um, and looking to make sure they can pay people's local gym memberships um, and trying to get people, you know, involved in boxing, MMA, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, Muay Thai, bodybuilding, and other physical sports. Um, uh, their funds also go to political activism for the few groups that promote healthy ideals and the values. We will reach out and help them with our shared goals. This it's always mean- so fucking yeah. silly to me that these guys are so into MMA and so into movie, Muay Thai, and they're also, like, fundamentally anti, like, not just anti-globalization, but anti, like, um because you know there's reasons to be anti-globalization but like anti-cultural interchange they're they're like against the idea of cultures mingling and mixing and the entire idea of mma is to take yeah. the best things from different cultures of martial arts but and Robert, mix them together it's what, like multiculturalism what does, in a sport yeah. what does the first word of, of, of mma stand for uh mixed mixed yeah okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. um so yeah they, they, <laughs> so sponsorship political activism the other thing that uh the right brands um money goes to is legal matters yeah they have a lot of those (laughs) (laughs) from time to time patriots will get singled out for noble actions by fake news or legal prosecution uh we will make sure these patriots are not alone and undefended their actions will be appreciated um and the last thing their money goes to is to expand to further the messages of white nationalist ideal, oh, sorry, of nationalist ideals. They did not put white in there. Um, and healthy values. So when you buy a shirt, you're not just buying a piece of fabric, but you're supporting the fight for all of our freedoms and our identities in a new way forward, which is very inspirational if you're a Nazi, I guess. Um, so like they, 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 they did, they did kind of lay it out. So, but most of their funds, I assuming, I'm assuming we're going to pay to for their gym, for their gym memberships. Um, this is what I'm kind of getting out of this. Um, and uh, yeah, I was, and I was trying to give the ramp people a job after they all kind of got in trouble at the tree trimming business um, because people didn't want to hire Nazis <laughs> to trim their trees. Their tree trimming Nazi business. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a, a few months after Ram started their clothing company, uh, some members embarked on a European tour to network with similar white nationalist MMA lifestyle groups all across Europe. Um, in their own words, to bridge the gap between the two nationalist scenes. Because Ram really was trying to be the kind of American version of these groups that have existed in Europe for a while. Um, and I mean, thankfully, it never never really took foot that much, uh, but I still think it probably could, or something similar probably could, um, uh, yeah. very, very soon. Because um, there, there have been other ways in which kind of the MMA scene has uh, been a little bit sort of infected by far right politics. Like a good example would be kind of some of the people who go on Joe Rogan's show, obviously like that's a vector. And I wonder if like maybe part of the reason why the explicitly fascist stuff like that Ram has been doing, hasn't gone as far, hasn't infected the scene as far as it might've is because there's kind of like already something of an inoculation in that area to it. Um, like a milder version has spread and maybe there's not as much appetite for the more extreme stuff because people have already bought into some aspects of that stuff and they don't necessarily want to, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's an interesting question. Someone who knows a goddamn thing about MMA might, might, might look into that. Yeah. Way. I'm not, if, if you couldn't tell from the way I look, if you've seen me in videos, I'm not really an MMA person. I am more of a run very quickly person. Um, so I'm really not the best person to comment on MMA stuff because running of, is generally the best self defense. Yeah, most of what I do is run on run yeah. and climb tall buildings, um, yeah. which I enjoy doing a lot. Um, 
Uh, so yeah, they were uh, trying to bridge the gap between the two national scenes. Um, the big event they attended and networked at was the annual Sword and Shield Festival in Germany, uh, a mixed martial arts tournament and a far right slash white nationalist conference held on Hitler's birthday. Um, oh, cool. <laughs> the the two day Nazi festival draws in about a thousand attendees and is put on by Germany's National Democratic Party. Um, yeah, so you you should be able to tell what the National Democratic Party is based on their name. Um, if you replace the word democratic with I don't know a different word. Um, anyway, uh, the uh, the event itself consists of speeches, uh, metal concerts, and a big merch room and a martial arts and a martial arts tournament. It is essentially Comic Con for Nazis. That is kind of what I'm getting out of this. Um, they have like this giant merch room. They can meet like you know famous Nazi people. It's just it's just Comic Con for you know fascists. Com- yeah, Comic Con for fascists. Oh boy, I yeah. Bet- I bet the bathrooms are just filled with steroid needles. I mean, just, just, just dripping. Like you wash your hands and you get HGH on them from the sink. Oh, that sounds great. The um, oddly enough, I mean, or maybe not oddly enough, but the M- the MMA portion of the event is the largest white nationalist combat sports event in the entire world. Um, so like this is actually like a very big deal in these kind of these kind of circles. Um. On the same trip, um, uh, the Ram team also stopped in France for the white nationalist boxing event put on by the Nazi group Gen- Generation Identity, um, who is kind of similar to like White Rex and like you know mm-hmm. the, the clothing brand thing. But also, Generation Identity uh, inspired the uh, U.S. based group Identity uh, Europa on more of like the race realism type things. So I know Identity, Identity Europa has like a different name now and is kind of defunct. Um, so that's probably good, but I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure we haven't seen the last of that type of thing. Um, so uh, about a week after the Sword and Shield uh, Festival, uh, Rob Rondo and Ben Daly and another Ram member, uh, Robert Smithson. They have a lot of Roberts. They've Rob mm-hmm. Rondo. Yeah, rude. Um, Robert Bowman. Robert <sighs> We're Smithson. We're complicated and troubled people. It's all these people born in the '80s named Robert. It's it's a lot of them. Um, anyway, how dare two- they? Two Roberts and a Ben uh, headed out to Ukraine <laughs> um, <laughs> to attend it. <laughs> to attend uh, it. <laughs> fascists do love R and B. They headed out to Ukraine to attend. <laughs> <laughs> to attend an MMA competition <laughs> at a nightclub in uh, Kiev that puts on events for white supremacists. Um, Rob Rondo actually competed in this one and he lost. Um, so that's good. Um, and then uh, whilst in uh, Ukraine, they also uh, hung out with uh, Dennis Nikitin, um, who is the founder of the neo-Nazi athletic MMA lifestyle brand White Rex, which we have talked about a little bit. Um which was, again, one of the main inspirations for Ram in the first place. Uh, Nikitin was one of the first to notice the declining popularity of skinhead culture and then tried to replace it with combining MMA subculture with far-right political ideologies when he founded White Rex back in 2008. Um, and it's been growing ever since. Um, around the same time uh, Nikitin met with Ram, he also spoke with The Guardian in an interview. Um, in an interview, he said this, quote, if we kill one immigrant every day, that's 365 immigrants a year, but tens of thousands will come anyway. I realize we're fighting the consequences, but it's not the underlying reason. So now we must fight for the minds, not on the streets, but on social media. So he's basically saying, even if we kill you know, one immigrant a day, still thousands are more going to come. So it's kind of a losing battle. We have, to, we have to stop focusing on street stuff and go back to social media stuff and try to fight for the minds of people. Um, which again, this was kind of like the opposite of what Ram was trying to do back in 2017. Um, but after this European tour, uh, Rob Rondo seems to take statements like this to heart. He, um, with them uh, departing from the heavy street-based action emphasis that Ram had in 2017, opting instead for more of a focus on propaganda and media than they had even before. Um, in the next few months, they put more work into their YouTube channel and uh, didn't attend any street actions. All this was also you know, partially due to Ram coming under increased scrutiny as 2018 marched on. Um, with ProPublica and uh, Frontline you know, putting together the you know, widely appraised uh, pieces on the group, you know, despite you know, the, the research themselves being based on it, uh, and Northern California anti-racist action and Jake Hanoran's work. Um, so yay, whatever. Um, uh, let's see. So October, uh, in 2018, Ram members get arrested. So, um, they began, eight, eight initially got arrested. Uh, four is going to get, four is going to get let off later. 
Um, so, but after, in the wake of these arrests, they started selling free the four stickers after only four people were arrested. Um, and then the next, after the next like week, four more, four more people got arrested. So then the website was completely, sh- it was completely shut down because they didn't know when to run it. Cause it was like, it was just those guys like, r- like running the website and like manually putting packages in the mail. Um, after, <laughs> so they, they got completely shut down. Um, so good. Yay. Thanks. Thanks comrade FBI for doing mm-hmm. that. 600 days too late um which which leads us back to june of uh of uh of 20 uh, 2019 with uh rundo's charges being dropped and him getting out of jail and almost immediately uh the ram uh gap account went active again <laughs> with with posts such as never take a plea deal always fight for the truth and they can lock us up they can lie about us but they can't stop an idea whose time has come so that's mm-hmm. good that he got to post on gab again i'm sure he really was missing out yeah um <laughs> Uh, uh, run on Gab. Rundo also claimed that the FBI seized all of like the sold Ram merchandise that they weren't able to ship out. So maybe that's true, and the FBI just has Ram stuff in a warehouse somewhere, which I think is kind of funny. Um, but uh, to raise money, Rundo teamed up with a different far right clothing company to sell Ram shirts and merch before eventually trying to start his own clothing company again because he seems really set on this idea. Of you know trying to sell these clothes and uh, and products. Sp- speaking of products, do you know where you can buy not Nazi merchandise, Robert? Oh, very nice, Garrison. I mean, you might be able to buy Nazi merchandise from our ads because Black Rifle Coffee has been uh, has been in them a couple of times. But as a general rule, and we're the only podcast that can promise that as a general rule, none of our sponsors are Nazis. Here's the ads. <laughs> Hi, we're back talking about Rob Rundo and him trying to flee to other countries again, again, again. He, he loves fleeing to other countries. He has he has whole YouTube videos on that are just tutorials for how to flee to other countries. It's great. That is, that is, I mean, you know, do what you know, right? Like do it, do what you love, and the money will come. I watched so many hours of his YouTube channel, and I, it wasn't good. But man. I if I ever if I ever need to flee to Ukraine, I know how now. It's mm-hmm. I've been given the tools and the information that I can successfully flee flee to Ukraine. That the thing is, Robert, you have to you have, you have to fly out of South America. That's the problem because if you try if you try to fly out of Mexico, because like as you, I'm assuming my travel flight is going to be blocked from the states. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, really, like my, what I'm guessing you want to do is you want to cross the border on foot into Mexico because they never check your passport. You want to have a bunch of cash and pesos on you. You want to travel through Mexico on foot or in vehicles, and then you want to cross the border from Mexico into Guatemala or wherever on foot, and then fly out from somewhere in Central America. It's not Mexico. Yeah. The thing, the thing that got Rundo in trouble is that he kept mm-hmm. trying to fly out from Mexico itself, and the problem is when the planes were flying, they crossed over Florida which is technically mm-hmm. American airspace. So that flagged Rundo because he can't cross American airspace. Mm-hmm. So what you, what you guys need to do is go way south and then fly and, and then fly to like central Europe. Don't go to London. You have to fly. You have to you have kind, of, kind of stay in the middle. And this way you'll be able to fly to Ukraine, uh, Serbia, wherever. Um, but you, ha- you have to get very south. As, as, south, as, south as, as south as you can walk, essentially. Um, it's really the only way to get, to, to, to get there. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, back to the podcast, I guess. Um, for, for the rest of 2019, uh, after R- Rundo got out of uh, prison, or I, I guess technically jail, not prison, um, uh, he tried to fly under the radar. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, he, he, was, he was kind of laying it low for most of 2019 after he got out of jail. Um, so b- before I get to 2020, I'd like to go into a little bit about Rundo's backstory. Mm. Um, Robert Paul Rundo, born April 28th of uh, 19, uh, 1990, um, he, he, was, he, was, he was born in Queens, New York. Um, his, his first real political belief as a kid was just a dislike of cops. Um, that's, that's, and, that's and oh boy, did he place. hate police and law enforcement. Because um, he, he's, he's one of those Nazis that sees the police as like an obstacle to being, to being able to hurt and kill leftists and non-white people. Um, and he, you know, he sees them as a force that just oppresses the right and protects the elite and protects the, you know, parenthesis, 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 parenthesis them, parenthesis, parenthesis, parenthesis. Um, so he, he sees police as like, you know, just someone protecting rich people and Jewish people. Um, so like, you know, so like so, so, so something he'll talk about 
or something, you know, we'll see in videos. It's like him doing like ACAB graffiti and stuff. And I know. <laughs> um, so like, I like a, a few days ago, I saw like um, Andy No posting about ACAB graffiti with like anti-Semitic stuff. He's like, oh, look at the anti-Semitic leftists. And like, no, that's Nazi graffiti because Nazis are also... Lots Nazis also hate cops. Just because you hate the cops doesn't mean you are also good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> O.J. Yeah. Simpson, not a fan of the cops. <laughs> like, uh, Ted Kaczynski, not, not a fan not, of the not cops. A fan, not a fan yeah. of the cops. And, and then to some degree, the Proud Boys now. I mean, um, a little bit. They're you know, increasingly they're, they're, not fans of the cops. There, there is as, a split going on. As yeah. we're reading this, it's becoming increasingly clear that Enrique Tario, head of the Proud Boys, was arrested today flying into uh, to D.C. See, what um, he should have done is he should have gone to South America. He should and have then flown, flown, <laughs> <laughs> and then flown into the ocean and then taken a boat to the coast. Oh, yeah, one can hope. Yeah, but like w- w- when I was like deep into Proud Boy groups this summer for like online chats, um, whether police are an ally or obstacle and oppressor of the right was one of the most like d- debated topics. Um, but by far the most debated topic on these Proud Boy chats were discourse around Jewish people, um, because again, the not, Proud Boys are just a fascist group. Um, so yeah, um, Rondo's initial reason to. Uh, that he says that got him to start to hate the cops before he was a Nazi is a really interesting story and like very uh, relatable. Um, so R- Rundo was a young, was a, was a young teenager in uh, New York um, out one night, putting up some shoe polish graffiti with some friends of his, not, not racist graffiti, just like regular, you know, kid graffiti. Um, the, uh, so they were like tagging like a bus stop or something and police pulled up um, the group of teens had to all lay down on the sidewalk. Um, an officer went up to Rundo and basically said, hey, kid, just tell us what you all tagged and we'll just write you a ticket and you can, and you can go on home. No big deal. Um, so Rundo told the officer what he did. And then the officer put Rundo in a cop car and Rundo spent six yep. months in juvenile detention. That's because they always lie, the cops. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this interaction, understandably, got Rundo to dis- uh, develop a very strong dislike of police. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, if this never happened, Rundo may not have actually become a Nazi because this, um, I mean, we'll, we'll talk later about how prison, how the prison system can turn, uh, has yeah. a way of turning young kids into Nazis. Um, yeah. So real, real stupid. I mean, and like Rundo like looks back at this moment and like, and like laughs about it. He's like, yeah, I was a stupid kid. I believed the cops. Um, but you should never believe the cops. I mean, you're a Nazi. Look, you, even a you Nazi right is going to be point. right every now and again, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. Look, I mean, for example, they're right about coats. They weren't bad at coats. Look, they have, I mean, they, like, they have good built coats. They have good coats. Okay, you know, and pretty solid assault rifles, and good anti-aircraft weapons. Like they, they weren't bad at everything, is what I'm saying. So after after Rondo Robert cut- Evans defending the Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I got onto this stray. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna like wave your Mauser on on web on, on the webcam? Well, no, now? this is a pre-Nazi gun, but I okay. do want to get an STG forty-four, um, which is 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 a wonderful firearm, um, and was produced by slave labor. But the money's not going back to Krupp anymore, so it's ethically fine. I think it's right? ethically it's ethically ambiguous. Ambiguous. There we go. Everything's there. good. All right, Yay! continue, Garrison. Ambiguity. Um, after Rondo got out of juvie, he got involved with the original Flushing Crew, uh, which was like a multicultural n- neighborhood gang in Queens who got into fights with MS-13. Um, in 2009, when Rondo was about 18, uh, MS-13 shot one of his best friends. And then uh, in response, Rondo stabbed a member of MS-13 that, that he ambushed. Um, Rondo got charged with uh, gang assault and was sent to prison and was sent, sent to state prison for like 20 months. Um, it was in this stint in prison that Rondo became a Nazi. So he, he went into prison just, you know, he was part of a neighborhood gang in Queens because MS-13 were a problem. So he was in like an, he was, he was in like an opposing gang, but got, got, got sent, sent to prison for stabbing MS, an MS-13 guy and then went to prison and he came out of prison a Nazi. A post, post-release, he moved to Southern California. And uh, again, a, a few years later, he would start DIY division, later renamed Ram. Um, so yeah, it's like he got out of prison in like 2010, no, in like 2011, 2012. And then in like 2016 is when he eventually is when he started, um, a D- DIY division, but he, he became involved with like camera skins and stuff in, 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 in between there. Um, so yeah, again, showing how the prison system kind of has a way of perpetuating these problems and 
is probably not great. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it always has, right? Like when Adolf Hitler, when he tried to overthrow the legally elected government of Germany was, was sent to prison for like a year in the a prison that was kind of more like a resort where he got to be there with all of his friends and he had his room and board taken care of. And he got to spend the whole year focusing on his ideas. And he wrote Mein Kampf during his time in prison. That's what it came out of. Prison is traditionally not necessarily the worst thing in the world for fucking Nazis. Um, we could also talk about ISIS and how it came together in Camp Buka, Iraq, which yeah, is a U.S. Yeah. detention facility. Like, there's a prison's bad as a rule. Um, yeah. you know, every now and then you run into someone who's like, yeah, that person probably needs to be kept away from the rest of the human race, like Paul Manafort. But mm. our prison system tends to do more harm than good, even when people we can all agree are bad get put in it. It's a bad system. Yep. Yeah. Yay. Anyway, um, back back to more recent times. Um, like I mentioned, Rondo laid low for most of 2019 after his rioting charges were dropped. But as 2020 rolled around, he started to get more active. Uh, most of his time this year, um, he's spent in Eastern Europe, hopping around to different countries. Um, he, he, he says he's left the U.S. due to, quote, nonstop harassment from American law enforcement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Which just sounds really funny. funny. Um, <sighs> uh, Rondo has also just kind of given up on the U.S. He's like he's 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 urged a lot of his fans to try to leave the country and join the nationalist cause elsewhere. Um, I'm going to quote from a really good uh, article in the New York Review about uh, about Rondo. Quote: Whereas Ram once hoisted banners at rallies def- declaring "Defend America," Rondo now believes, as he told the podcast interviewer um, in, in a podcast he was on, that the country is quote collapsing. He has urged his fellow right-wing dissidents to fly, uh, to, uh, to, to flee the United States, and if possible, obtain foreign passports to avoid uh, travel restrictions like the no-fly list. So again, this is part of his videos where he tells people how to, you know, avoid no-fly lists and how to flee to other countries and stuff. Um, very, very fun YouTube channel that really should not exist at all. And he has like, you know, Nazi imagery in all of his videos. I don't know why YouTube still lets him on there. Maybe because YouTube doesn't have a problem with Nazis. So, um, since this time, Rondo's also dropped all pretexts of not really being a Nazi. He doesn't use like dog whistles anymore. Um, he just, you know, is full, is full, is full, is full on. Um, in, in Europe, he's gotten um, an eight tattooed on each shoulder, making, um, cool. you know, an mm. 88 Heil Hitler reference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, on his, uh, on his uh, abdomen, he has a dagger emboldened with the phrase, me no frigo, or I don't care, the motto of the Italian black shirts. And on yep. top of it, he has a huge son in red on his right elbow. So really, cool. re- really going all out there. Um, yeah. Uh, R- Rondo's uh, first notable public appearance was in February 2020 in Budapest, where he was seen and posted a video attending a neo-fascist rally to commemorate wartime Hungarian volunteers in the Germany's um, uh, SS division. Uh, this, th- this appearance not only uh, a- attracted attention from journalists and anti-fascists, but also federal prosecutors. Um, and in March, a motion was filed to appeal his charges. Um, just two weeks after his appearance in Budapest at the Nazi rally, he was in Sofa, Bulgaria, um, uh, Sofia, Bulgaria, for an annual massive neo-Nazi march that's been going on since 2003. And for the first time, the Nazi gathering, the Nazi gathering was actually banned by local authorities uh, just days after a fascist, a fascist attack in Germany killed nine people. Um, so... There was this fascist attack in Germany, killed nine people, and then uh, Bulgarian authorities kind of tried tried to cancel this neo-Nazi massive rally. Um, He has a horrible haircut. Yeah, I mean, Rondo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, it's not great. Um, I mean, I'll talk. I mean, I'll I'll bring this up a little bit later. I'll be talking about his um, personal aesthetic. Um, Yeah. So this big Nazi rally got canceled. Well, quote unquote, canceled by the authorities. but people still showed up. Uh, there was a small c- commemoration to a Nazi uh, collaborating general taking place during the day, and later a nightly, uh, like uh, a nightly torch burning march was heavily surveilled by local police. Nothing really happened. Um, but at the time, Rondo had an alibi of sorts. He just started a new propaganda project called Media to Rise Nationalist Entertainment. Um, Rondo describes it as a right wing alternative to something like Vice. Um, quoting Rondo here, quote, 
another way, uh, another way of creating a counterculture to the left is by uh, covering everything from demonstrations, concerts, and creating our own uh, entertainment within the nationalist lifestyle way. So he, he repeatedly says he wants to create a right-wing alternative to Vice, uh, which is a funny phrase yep. to say in the first place, considering how considering. what Vice is. <laughs> and who started Vice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that the founder of Vice founded, one of the founders of Vice founded the Proud Boys. Yeah, yeah. not that Vice is a right-wing outlet, because I wouldn't call that fair, but yeah, very still very funny. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So yeah, so far they've put out just two actual episodes, averaging like an eight minutes each. But on his YouTube channel, he has like dozens of other vlog style videos giving different tips on how to travel if you're a terrorist, um, propaganda tips, how to put together your own gang, how to interact with police, how to stay motivated with the left always winning, which lol is a, is a, <laughs> a video topic he has is how to stay motivated with the left always winning, which I just, I, as I find funny because usually I don't think of the left as always winning. Um, lol. No. Uh, really not ever <laughs> yeah not really ever um, videos with like fighting tips workout routines and how to do graffiti and banner drops also he seems very triggered when uh, people tell him that banner drops are silly and graffiti is mm-hmm. not good activism he gets very triggered and makes lots of videos defending banner drops which is like whatever sure um, but I like I like how upset he gets when people call his activism stupid um, which is just always fun to watch them get upset um uh, while while in Europe, Rundo has been traveling around a lot, but he seems to be mainly setting up base in Serbia. Um, having learned a little from his poor OPSEC in the past, or poor online OPSEC in the past, um, all of these vlog videos has Rundo in front of locations that he thinks looks very cool, which mm-hmm. makes them relatively ident- identifiable. Um, the online investigation website Bellingcat has tracked Rundo throughout to all of 2020, uh, Rundo was first spotted in Serbia in March in a, in a video titled Thoughts and Tea with Robert Rundo. Just <laughs> nice. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry. I just <laughs> think it's very funny. Don't yeah. come for tea. First, these fuckers take the beach. Now they want to take tea time. They want to take tea time. <laughs> and I mean, Aussie, look, this, tea's <laughs> always been a little fashy. Okay. We, we, can, we can look at the history of the British Empire and acknowledge that. I mean, fair enough, but I don't like it, Robert. And they're trying to take your name, your your beautiful first name, mm-hmm. and just taint Thank it. Thank you. So many Roberts in in Ram. It should just be renamed the Robert above move uh, whatever. Okay, I like um, uh, you. I I saw the point in what you were going yeah. for there. Okay, so th- th- this the setting of this tea video was quickly tracked to being a cafe in uh, Belgrade, Serbia. In a uh, in another video posted in July. Rondo was at an event with, uh, with, with many members of the Serbian nationalist group, the Hero Foundation. Um, the video also features a free, a free RAM banner referencing the RAM members that are still locked up. Uh, also in July, Re- uh, Rondo could be seen on, Serbio, uh, on, uh, on Serbian TV at a fascist event in which he calls himself like um, Roman. But he, 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 he gets like, interviewed by an anchor at this like, fascist event on Serbian live TV. <laughs> so... That's great. <laughs> it's funny. Oh. Um, the, the the next month, Runda posted a whole uh, a whole free RAM themed video, um, with uh, with video uh, composed of uh, with uh, the footage composed of different fascist groups all around the world putting up free RAM graffiti and banners. Um, now, this video actually has been taken down from YouTube. So, great job YouTube for doing literally the bare minimum, but still leaving his channel up and all his other videos on how to fly if you're a terrorist up, but whatever. Sick um, well, hey, that's good information. Everybody needs to know how to escape <laughs> criminal charges against you by fleeing the country. That's just important. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, 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 the footage from countries, uh, the, all, the, so there's countries from like no different fascist groups all around the world. Um, cu- countries included are uh, Ukraine, Shocker. Uh, Serbia. Shocker. Greece. Shocker. Germany. Shocker. Poland. Shocker. Italy. Shocker. Um, Scotland. Russia. Uh, Canada. Uh, Canada inside the province of Alberta, because of course that's like the one place. Yeah, it's the Texas of Canada. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's where I'm going to be fleeing. Is mm-hmm. the mountains of Alberta? That's my mm-hmm. plan. That's also uh, where one of my favorite musicians, Cor Blund, comes from. He's the guy who does that uh, "Getting Down on the Mountain" song that we play oh, whenever really? we go up to go shoot on the mountain, Garrison. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a fun yeah. song. Yeah. Um, and then in the states, uh, we have you know footage from the states of uh, Indiana, Washington, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, Florida, and California in uh, in San Diego and Huntington Beach. So a lot of 
So again, like a lot of a lot of groups putting up free RAM stuff for this like video collaboration. Um, anyway, in uh, in August, someone um, shadow boxing and covered up in a T-shirt wrapped like a ninja mask with all of the with all of Robert Rondo's tattoos can be seen in a Serbian nationalist rap music video, which is awesome. Weird sentence, <laughs> but like. <Amazing. laughs> So like they have footage of Rundo shadow boxing in a mask. That's like it's like a t-shirt, but the t-shirt is a rise above movement t-shirt because you can see the word above on the side. So like he just used one of his own t-shirts he sells as this mask and you can see him like shadow boxing in the background, which is just kind of funny. Incredibly stealthy. Yeah. <laughs> um so uh, Rundo got a little bit upset that Belling Cat kept kept identifying where he was. Um so with everyone kind of knowing that Belling uh, that 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 Rundo is um is you know uh, doing, constantly being tracked yeah, yeah he's he's constantly and being bad tracked at not being tracked and yes. yeah he's constantly being geolocated to Serbia um and then uh, so eventually Rundo started out just actually just being open about where he was and started like you know making fun of Bellingcat uh, for being able to like 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 referencing Bellingcat for being able to like track where he was but he eventually started being like saying yeah I am in Serbia um. Uh, yeah, so in September, in a podcast appearance, he actually said that he had left Serbia now. So he's saying, oh yeah, I was in Serbia, Bellingcat tracked me, they're, they're, they're stupid, I hate Bellingcat, whatever. Uh, but now I have left Serbia. Um, except, in a video he posted on October 1st, sitting on a lake, uh, said lake got geolocated by Bellingcat to Lake uh, Peruak <laughs> in Serbia. So... He's not. If people who are good at geolocating <laughs> want to know where you are and you post any pictures outside in a decent number of different pictures you could post inside, they will find you. I, I did this later on, which we'll, we'll talk about yeah. uh, at the end of the episode because um, I, I know where he is now. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, very fun. He got after he said he left Serbia, he got tracked to being in Serbia again like the next month. Um, yeah, and, uh, Serbia and, is pretty great. In uh, October twenty, on October twenty eighth, uh, Rundo posted a photo on his Telegram channel of an anti Antifa, anti BLM, anti drug sticker that he had presumably put up on a bus stop. Um, a journalist, said, a journalist at Bellingcat recognized some of the background in the photo and actually went to confirm the spot in person the next day. And yeah, it was the same spot in the middle of um, uh, downtown Belgrade in in, uh, in, Belgrade, in Serbia. Yeah. Um, Amazing. Yeah. So with enough online digging, uh, social media, uh, and, and, so, and social media stalking, uh, people at Bellingcat were able to learn a bit more about the video production of, uh, of Rundo's Media to Rise project and find a few of the locations in other videos. Um, I'll quote from a, uh, from a, uh, a Bellingcat article from November 18th. Um, on October 30th, Luke, oh boy, uh, this is a rough last name. Luca. L- Luca Cara. Dezuziski. Oh, I don't You're know. You're doing great, buddy. Yeah. Following okay. in the footsteps of Robert Evans. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, October 30th, this Luca guy, um, a 19-year-old Belgrade videographer, photographer, and web designer posted a public Instagram story um, showing Robert Rundo being interviewed by an unknown TV crew. Um, this guy lists W2, W2R, uh, the official short name of Rundo's company, but this is like a will to rise. Um, he uh, he posted that as as a client on this on his personal website, um, and he listed the the and he was listed as the creator of a few of these videos that Rundo was posting. Um, a quote from this guy after he got interviewed by Bellingcat via email: um, Rob, "Rob Rundo reached out to me looking for looking for someone to hire who can do good enough videos and photos." Um, he added that quote: "I'm not much into political things. I was just hired uh, by Rundo to record a few behind the scenes videos." Um, in the background of the Instagram story, near the end, the words uh, Smurf a Kappa, uh, sm- s- oh God, Smurf it Kappa, whatever, um, mm-hmm. can be yeah, seen. Nailing it, nailing it. The key, Garrison, when you don't know how to pronounce something, is just to barrel on ahead with confidence and assume that you can retroactively make it right. I've changed the pronunciations of dozens of words for everyone in the world now. And that's, that's probably that's, true to some degree. Yeah. You have to you you just have to be confident and know that you're right, no matter what the truth is. Yeah, it doesn't anyway. matter that her name is Ariana Grande. She'll be Ariana Grande to Robert exactly. till the day he dies. Exactly. That's why everyone calls her Ariana Grande now. Yeah. Because of confidence. Uh, what's the, what's the what's the fake Beyonce from the from the um, Christmas episode? Um, 
anyway, this Smurfit Kappa um, is a European paper manufacturer whose <laughs> factory is in um, uh, Belgrade. And so then this was, um, so thanks to this, Bell- Belly Cat was able to geolocate the exact location of the video to a nearby site along the uh, river that goes through, uh, that goes through Belgrade. Uh, they, they visited the site in person, confirming this was not only the, in- indeed the site of the, vi- uh, indeed the site of the video, but the location also had free RAM graffiti uh, beside it and featured uh, RAM social media events being advertised. Um, and so after, after repeatedly being shown to be in Serbia, particularly, particularly Belgrade, um, on November 8th, Rundo posted a video to his Telegram, but he opens by saying, so we're here in Belgrade, you know, cleaning up the neighborhood, doing some beautiful artwork for the locals Back as he's surrounded as, as he's surrounded by fascist graffiti. Um, then he does just a, a tour of the area. So yeah. Um, but Rob Rundo is looking for uh, more, than ex- more than an extended vacation. It's quite likely he's trying to look for a legal residency uh, here in Serbia mm. because per public records, Rundo incorporated an LLC in Serbia back in July with the name Will to Rise, the same name as his new athletic fascist clothing company. Oh, Yay, Jesus he did it again. fucking Christ, man. Yay! Doesn't uh, he know that his haircut is like not cute and that he should just stop trying to be? Uh, Asobi, I can give you one of his phone numbers and you can send him a message if you want. Yeah, we could we could call him on the show. <laughs> he's and got a bad haircut. That his haircut <laughs> is not cute and that yeah. like I don't want your hair his looks like fashion. trash, bro. And fashion is also. Are is you skipping no. leg day? I've noticed your legs are not. Yeah, your legs, man. Are not he's, as, he might. He might leap right through that phone and go after you, Garrison. <laughs> Jump over all the police lines. Uh, yeah. So um, via, via, via public records, uh, people were able to find uh, two addresses for Rundo in Serbia, quoting Bellingcat again. Um, um, quoting Bellingcat again. Uh, but Rundo's incorporation of a company in Serbia may not simply be for business purposes. In Serbia, a foreigner who incorporates a company can apply for a temporary residency for up to a year at a time and can then renew this residency with a new application every year. In short, this would allow Rundo to build a semi-permanent legal base in a European country without having to worry about visa-free regulations that limit American citizens to spending no more than 90 days uh, in Serbia within a half a year period. So, Mm. He's 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 basically trying to move to Serbia permanently, um, and maybe trying to get out of legal prosecution in the states if his charges get appealed. But this is a little bit unclear because Serbia's extradition policy is like brand new and it's never been used before, so we don't really know the details of Can this. Can I just say um, we would not advertise his clothing line on our show? No. We're not. But do you know what we will advertise, Sophie? Black Rifle Coffee, maybe. I really this is Black hope, Rifle Coffee, if, if, and if they not. sneak on and guess. all of the other fine sponsors <laughs> of the podcast, including perhaps accidental and intentional sponsors. Perhaps we work, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. I mean, yeah, I enjoy. Good. I I'm okay with the WeWork ads because they're trash, but they're also doomed thanks to the virus. So we're just taking some of their last money before they yeah, finally it's like, how about fall you apart. Say I, I don't some mind for that. your snacks, WeWork, or your mm-hmm. fucking water infused with fruit that you give people. I don't think they're providing that anymore. Yeah, probably not. Probably my my favorite ad was when you talked about Michael Bloomberg on the show and then like immediately after good. Michael mm. Bloomberg had played, which I, was I, which was perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was perfect. We gladly took his money, to be honest. I bought some shit he would have hated with his money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, here's here's some more ads, hopefully mm-hmm. for Michael Bloomberg. He's running, if he's still running presidential ads now, which would be great if he would. Aww, that'd be fun. That'd anyway. Be nice. Yeah. Give us Go some more Mike. money, Bloomy. What 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 a thrilling ad from Mr. from Mr. Bloomberg airing in January or not, yeah. yeah January or, or February really of 2021 dropped a lot more f bombs than I expected. <laughs> I just yeah. enjoyed Garrison like stuttering through saying "Go Mike," but Go like Mike. with authority. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I was channeling my Michael Bloomberg and my Joe yeah. Biden. There. I know it was, both it was really good. <laughs> Yeah, they all just got younger and Garrison visibly aged by 35 oh, years. Oh, shit. That's, well, that's probably good. I can hide in Alberta easier now. <laughs> if I look less like a twink, it'll be easier to blend in. All right. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, 
as I mentioned, Will to Rise, Rundo's new lifestyle brand of fascism. It's it's just the right brand clothing company all over again, but even more openly fashy. They have the same like ethical supply chain line, but this time with this description, um, at Will to Rise, we make all of our we make sure all of our products and designs are created by those who share our, our values and identities. All products are made in Eastern Europe, so not a single hand touches the production line that is not like my own. <laughs> In doing this, we keep our people employed and keep all funds within our ranks, something not many other brands can claim. So, good. It's, like, not <sighs> aesthetically cute and just is, like, just, like, the font is, like, too big for the t-shirt. Oh, are you looking, are you looking at the Will to Rise website? Yeah, it's just, the, like, not, I would not wear it. My favorite thing about the Will to Rise website is that I don't know what problem it has, but it takes, like, 10 seconds to load every time I change pages. Yeah, this is it's not, very slow. It's, it's not great. It's very slow. It's very, it's very, very Robert, good. Robert, I'm going to text you a picture of my least favorite shirt for you to observe. I'll, I'll talk about some like, shirts here. Yeah, I'll talk about some shirts right now. Um, please, please, Garrison. On, it's on, on their site, really the, ugly. Yeah, so on their site, they sell, they sell Ram shirts. Um, uh, they sell white Rex shirts with a. I see uh, that. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna mispronounce this. Um, phalan- phalange, phalange, phalangists. Yeah, phalange. Phalange. Anyway, yeah. the the the, 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 the Spanish yeah. fascist symbol. Oh um, wow, that's a hideous shirt. Yes, it is. The thought criminal one. The My thought God. criminal shirt where the font is. Oh, put- the thought criminal shirt. Yeah. Oh, it's, that was pretty good. It's just yeah. like, for and like the person who's modeling it doesn't help. Like, no, can I no. just say? I mean, they have very fashy tattoos. They have so, very fashy yeah. tattoos, and clearly are wearing the wrong size. Shirt. They have a they have a uh, they have a reject poison embrace struggle shirt, which is like you know a straight edge shirt. Um, that's good. Um, do you do you have do you see their um uh, old ideals new style shirt? With no, very, I I, oh, I, I I'm seeing the aggressive clothing company shirt. I'm also. The one I'm what I'm enjoying is for the thought criminal shirt, the text below it. We have all committed the crime of having too much to think, so we've been brand thought criminals. <laughs> Who made this not a se- website? Uh, not a sentence, it's guys. Really not a sentence from yeah. the thought criminals. Maybe you should have spent some time thinking about how to write a fucking sentence. Yeah. Amazing. But the, web- the website's very poorly coded. It takes it's very slow. Um they wait, have wait, a wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what? <laughs> What <laughs> old ideas, new style? You fucking look so. Oh yeah, the guy. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's great. Um, oh, it's really good. Yeah, Robert, um, Robert, Robert. Peep the one I just sent you. you. It's it to pretty me? fucking. Hit. Oh yeah, they were like, you know what? For this one, right, the model right. should have no tattoos. Oh, it's very good. It's so yeah. hideous. Old ideals, like, new style. Is that like a boxer? Yeah, it is a boxer. Yeah. Okay, and he's like all Greek. And yeah. um, on the uh, on the navy version of the shirt, like Trump, on the navy version of the shirt, you can see uh, Rob Rondo modeling him, himself with a backwards baseball cap and sunglasses. Um, Good lord! With his sun and red tattoo on the side. Yeah. Ah, uh, amazing! Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, the thought the thought criminal the thought criminal shirt is very fun. It's, yeah. The the guy has very large pecs, and it looks very silly. Yeah, he's he's wearing a deliberately too tight shirt. <laughs> They also have um, several like really awkward fitting like cargo joggers and like okay, cargo so shorts. They have a so they have a bottoms section of the website, which I think is a very funny name. For I them do to too. Do um, and they also sell custom Rhodesian shorts. Um, so. Yeah, I see that. And the guy, the guy, definitely, definitely <laughs> skipped leg day. Is what we, I have to we've say. We've talked about the Rhodesians a few times on this show and how it was a white uh, supremacist utopia in Africa. Uh, yeah. that lost a war to continue existing when they accidentally put all of their oil in one place and it got blown up. Yeah. The Rhodesians military famously wore like very short shorts into combat for a period of time. Yeah. And so white nationalists love Rhodesian <laughs> shorts. The funny thing about the Rhodesian <laughs> shorts is that the Rhodesian military banned their soldiers from wearing them because their very, very white legs made it incredibly easy to spot them in the bush and they kept getting shot to death. I mean, Robert, um, you need to check out I love the, it. <laughs> you need to check out the Rhodesian shirt sh- shorts on the website. Because they are very short, and you can see everyone's very white legs, and it's great. Yeah, yeah, um, and that way you can shoot them in the bush more easily. No notes. I support the shorts. No yeah. notes. Yeah, 
Rhodesian shorts were a secret comrade. This is such a weird photo, especially the one where you can see that this guy skipped leg like day and also has a not nice bum. Like, yeah, it's just not, like not, not well shaped at all. And, and Sophie never butt shames on the podcast. I never so butt shame. Like, I am, pro, yeah. I am pro butt all the way, but this is for, not for a nice being ass, in a sec- guys. For being in a section called uh, called Bottoms. The it's not it's not, <laughs> it's not that good of a, it's very flat uh, and also if you look at the good. lower left calf he has a very faded sun and red tattoo that that just looks ugly like it's it just it's it's half faded so it looks just really aesthetically un, unple, unpleasing in the not yeah. great bum photo I do like that there's like a like he's like gripping his fist yes he is he he's is like, gripping his fist I... and I, he's he's holding something he's holding a black thing i don't know what it is maybe a phone i mean i, I was gonna be really inappropriate but maybe i shouldn't <laughs> no I'm, I'm 18 now it's fine oh okay. that's right forgot that you're of legal age i mean it's just like he's holding like i don't know it's just like <laughs> his really tiny balls that he clearly has cut i don't know there's a lot happening okay here. that went in a different direction than i thought yeah um, it's just yeah. like not it also the crotch shot like, yeah, not not a good crotch shot. It's bad. Nope. Like normally, yeah. like you know, it's like Mike Pence getting the COVID vaccine bad in the like ripples, but you can yeah. clearly tell not. Nope, it's not good. It's anyway, not good. Skipped leg day. What can skip, I say? They skipped leg day, and this is what happened. Um, so yeah, they sell the Rhodesian shorts. Um, a myriad of fascist stickers, lots of fascist iconography. In fact, if you look at the sticker section of the website, they've actually blurred out a lot of symbols on the website itself because they like I guess will get in trouble if they display them I don't know um, but I think that's fun um, but they uh, they also sell uh, shirts from Pride Fan- from from Pride France another uh, Nazi MMA brand with a with a with a the shirt has a sun and red and a raccoon that says respect nature which again ties into uh, Julia Savola and eco fascism which I'll talk about later towards the end um, which I'm not 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 thrilled about. Um, but yeah, they, they, they sell stuff from a whole bunch of other fascist companies as well on their, on their own website. Um, so yeah, like, um, but all right, let's, let's do, let's do it. We're nearing to the end here. So let's do a, a retrospective on Rundo. So okay. looking, looking at Rundo now, he's, he's very different than the Rundo circa 2017. He's, he's no longer clamoring to get into fist fights with fist fights with teenagers in black block. He's carefully trying to craft an aesthetic of fascism that hasn't quite gained popularity in the States yet, but I think one that very well could. Um, if you look at his more recent videos compared to his past videos, he's still trying to, he's still trying to offer, he's still trying to offer an alternative to the nerdy meme-based right and the LARPy tactical militia right, but instead of just focusing on physically confronting your ideological enemies, as Ram used to say, um, there's more of a focus on encouraging classic real-world propaganda techniques like street graffiti, banner drops, and advising younger guys to get off the internet more um, and to create smaller crews of like-minded Nazis in real life to accomplish various direct actions, um, you know, beyond just fighting Antifa. Um, quoting from a really good article in the New York, in the New York Review by a great journalist named uh, Ali Winston, uh, quote, it remains to be seen what Rundo does with all of this uh, Eastern European education on how to be structured," said a longtime investigative uh, ger- uh, said a longtime investigator of white power groups, who uh, who was not authorized to speak on the record. But in recent in, in recent interviews, the investigator noted it appears Rundo's approach to organizing has grown more sophisticated. He's quote maturing. The investigator said, comparing Rundo. Uh, now to Thomas Metzer, the former Klansman and founder of the group White Aryan Resistance, who's, a, who's an ideologue uh, revered by the Hammerskins and other skinhead groups. So we, we, and I think that's accurate. We have really seen a maturing of Rundo um, in the past few years. If you look at the stuff he puts out now, compared to the stuff he puts out in 2017, um, he is much more polished. He's much more kind of put together and trying to be more of like a mentor figure um, to, you know, younger guys as opposed to like this like street brawler. Um, and even now, I can see Ram's influence spreading in the in 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 the young and new right in the states. Uh, when Rundo got out of jail, he connected and seemingly mentored a fascist youth organization called Revolt Through Tradition. Um, from what I can tell, Revolt Through if if, if, you're, if you're familiar with Uprising, a guide from Portland, um, Revolt Through Tradition is essentially the fascist YLF. From what I can kind of gather here, Youth uh, Liberation Front, okay. yeah, 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 because like they have a lot of the same aesthetics. They're kind of you know anti-modernism, anti-tech, 
I, I, I don't want to say anti-civ because they're not anti-civilization, but they're but they're they're anti-modern society in the same way you know a fascist is in terms of like a fascist like a Julius Savola fascist, which I might very well write a bastard, bastards episode on uh, later because I I think uh, you know his influence on Ram and stuff like revolt through, revolt through tradition is uh, is going to be more concerning when I see like intersection with eco fascism and this kind of you know very uh, direct yeah. action based kind of fascist. We talked organizing. about. Avola a little bit on our Savitri Devi episodes, and he's someone who worries me a lot. Because I mean, for one thing, he's Steve Bannon's favorite philosopher. Like he's yep. actually extremely influential, um, but not in a way like he like the vast majority of people, even people who consider themselves knowledgeable about fascism, have never heard his name because yep. he's he's not like a a very showy influencer, but he influences people that you do know, and he's yeah he's he's a very Serious person to be concerned about. I mean, he's been dead for years, but his ideas. His, his, his writing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Amazon sells tons of Ebola books, which is very bad. <laughs> it's not like, great. They, they, uh, what, they, like, they feature um, his book, um, uh, A Handbook for Right-Wing Youth, which they should not be selling. It's a very dangerous text that should not mm-hmm. be sold on Amazon. <laughs> like, that shouldn't be happening. That's very bad. Um, Bezos this is the- bad? Wow. Yeah, shocker. Um, he's he's but, a big supporter of revolting through tradition. Yeah, so Revolt um, has released a few videos, very you know reminiscent of Ram's early stuff, while also drawing a little bit from Adam Waffen style videos. Um, but you know they they practice f- f- physical training, um, except they've learned from Ram's mistakes, and in all the videos they're wearing ostensibly black block um, mm. from their website. Uh, uh, Quote, Revolt for Tradition is a meta-political organization and a movement, not a club. We seek to we seek others to build a community through education, culture, activism, and health and a healthy lifestyle. We seek those who are willing to stand up for something. Um they 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 have topics, they have articles and topics from like European martial arts to the war the warrior mentality. Here's that again. Um Ugh. and standing against standing against de- de- degeneracy and modernism, and you know, very much like Anti, anti-modern anti society, anti-tech people need to go in, into the woods, you know, reminiscent of, you know, Ted Kaczynski stuff and, you know, Julie Savola was saying the same things back in his day. Um, yeah. So a, a lot of this kind of stuff I'm seeing popping up more. And when this intersects with eco-fascism, I think we're going to have a real problem. Um, yeah. The, we're, we're, seeing, we're seeing a lot of... And, and, um, and like, re- revolt is actively growing. Like, their their Telegram is very active. They're posting more videos on YouTube. Um, I'm I'm seeing like their membership grow uh, from from you know watching what kind of videos they put out you know mm-hmm. a year ago compared to now. They have different you know people in different cities popping up now, different kind of chapters. So like it is it is very it's 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 an active it's an active problem because they're actively recruiting like youth and you know like um like uh, you know teens and people in their young twenties um, to try to you know get into this very you know m- m- like meta politics. Kind of thing because like their goal is to get people out of electoralism and they're active their is, on like social media and everything yeah social media uh facebook twitter parlor do um have, do they have a pod they don't have a pod but i i'll, I'll talk i'll talk, talk talk i'll talk about pod podcasting soon because uh, rundo is trying to start one um, oh good oh i'm sure he, I, he should <laughs> let me know if he needs some advice <laughs> yeah. Chief among that no. advice would be to drink 409 but yeah they're like they're basically <laughs> the, the, the goal rundo and you know revolt through, <laughs> revolt through tradition's goal is to you know take d- disenfranchised youth who are you know on the right and, tr- and try to get them to go beyond ele- electoralism you know try try to break them out of the electoral cycle you know walk away from the Re- Republic- Republican Party and start doing like actual direct actions this is called like um, meta politics trying to combine political activism but not in the framework of electoralism trying to bring it into like you know just the mainstream culture and how you live your everyday life. Um, yeah, the, uh, the so with with the right getting more and more disenf- disenfranchised and disaffected with Trump's loss, I can see groups like this growing uh, sub- sub- substantially the, the next four years. The same way anti-fascists grew under you know the previous four years. Sure. Um, yeah, um, Rundo actually also sells Revolt Through Tradition stickers on his website. Yeah, which I, I've se- I've seen I've seen stickers getting posted in Seattle, all across the South, all across the East Coast, West Coast. I'm seeing Revolt Through Tradition stickers pop up in a lot of spots. Um, yeah, I'm particularly kind of watching this group right now. Um, I- I'm going to quote the New York the New York Review article again for more on this topic. Quote: Rondo also drew on the writings of fascist philosopher Julius Savola 
to conceive of the Rise Above movement as a meta-political organization that would foster its own culture, making it independent of Western commercial culture, which Rundo believes is sapping the vitality of white Americans with mainstream TV, substance addiction, junk food, and multicultural values. Following Evola's teaching, he believed the right can pro- uh, provide wayward white youth with a direction and purpose in life through political and physical education. This would equip uh, young cadres to, quote, revolt against the modern world, in the words of Evola. Um, and that Ram, Ram made that basically its credo, uh, to prepare them to confront ideological opponents. Quote, they did nothing with electoral politics, but they did everything with street politics and building a counterculture, Ram uh, f- founder uh, Rundo said of uh, Casa Proud, an Italian fascist organization. So again, focus on moving away from electoral, uh, electoralism and doing, you know, building a culture within the youth to kind of get more nationalist ideas into the mainstream that is achievable not through electoral politics, but through direct action. Um, so yeah, what, what Rundo himself brought to this project um, was uh, a degree of charisma that made him able to recruit others. Quoting him again, uh, everything we can do that's outside the mainstream outside of their poison outside of their poison we need to do so again trying to get out of the mainstream and getting out of electoralism um so yeah i mean rundo does have a weird kind of charisma like he's not he's not he's, i don't know like i i watched so many rundo videos in the past month or so um and he, he definitely has something that he is getting much better at engaging with audiences over over video and over audio he is he's definitely learning how to do that um uh, and I, I, so earlier, um, er, like last month, I geolocated a, a new uh, Robert Rundo video uh, back to Serbia because actually he, uh, Rundo was in the States in November. Um, and then we kind of didn't know where he was. He posted a new video in December and he was back in Serbia, back in Belgrade. I posted, I, I found the exact location of the video um, that I posted on Twitter about. And I, I had like people in my comments saying that like I shouldn't be talking about Rundo because he's too attractive and charismatic, quote unquote, which... I, I will push back on like have if, they seen his haircut? Like if your Sexy problem with me posting can about be Rundo... fascists too. Look at Hitler. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was that was okay. <laughs> but like my point is like if, if if you're saying I shouldn't like people shouldn't talk about these guys because they're too charismatic and attractive, maybe you should do some inner thinking. Because I think yeah, there's a facts. way to talk about these guys. And the fact that you're calling him attractive um, instead of focusing on all the bad things, I think maybe you should do some reflection. Um, I don't know. It's just a weird, 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 weird thing um, because there needs to be a way to talk about and warn about what these guys are trying to do and what they're gonna and how they're gonna try to recruit youth in the next four years because they are going to. They're gonna try to recruit a lot of disaffected teens and disaffected people in their twenties. Um, so uh, the, the federal appeal on Rundo's charges is still being granted, and um, and if he has to face another trial. Um, which is still a big if, um, because sure. we don't know that. It depends on if his, it depends if the appeal gets granted. Um, so, but but e- e- even if he does have to face trial, his mark has been left, and at this point, it's just kind of reducing how much um, how much that the how much the mark he's left can spread. Right? Will we have to deal with only a few branch off organizations or many many more? Right? Are we have to mainly focus on um, like revolt through tradition and the remnants of Ram, or is this going to spread you know wildly and you know? you know, impact the stuff the same way like the Proud Boys will. I, I don't know yet. Um, would his conviction for, uh, you know, would his conviction on his violence set a precedent for fascist street violence for federal charges or would he become a martyr? I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't really know what that's going to do because, I mean, Ben Daly's already arrested and, and in federal prison. So I don't know how much, I mean, Rundo was more, you know, visible but I, I don't know if his conviction would really be meaningful in any way or if he'll just turn him into more of a martyr. I'm not sure about that either. Um, it all, all this depends if he tries to flee, and if, if, uh, which would be very funny, if he tries to flee again, or if he just tries to still, still, still hiding in, uh, in Serbia because Serbia does have a brand new extradition treaty, but no one's, been, no one's ever been extradited through, through the treaty before. Um, it just started in 2019, so we don't know if that'll actually hold. Um, sure. Yeah. So I mean, and if and if he does flee, all that means is that I'll have more fun, and more geolocation nerds will have more fun trying to uh, find him. Um, in the meantime, he has like three YouTube channels that we can try to. I don't know. They probably shouldn't exist. Um, he has, uh, yeah, they're called like Media to Rise and different variations thereof. He shouldn't have YouTube channels. Uh, he does Nazi stuff on all of them. The, this this should not be happening. And uh, just a few days ago, 
as of this recording, he announced he's starting a podcast. Oh, good. Fuck. Yeah. Really getting. Stay the getting fuck in. away from our platform. <laughs> so his podcast, he, he says it's going to be about nationalist lifestyle, activism, uh, like love it. Demos, demonstrations, brawls, competitions, um, and how to deal with law enforcement. He said it's, it's, it's he said it's not about theory. It's not about political commentary. It's about actual, you know, meta politics. Like it's actually like about getting you politics to be part of just your everyday culture and everyday life. Um, so Robert, for you guys, you know, you, you guys have, will have a new podcasting rival and so, so, ah, so, so, something that's for gonna me, be the one that does us in. So something for me, that's going to be interesting is he also announced he's making a short film. So I have a new rival <laughs> in the short film scene. And he said, it's a short film with costumes. He was very ooh, happy. Ooh, he was ooh. very happy that they had costumes oh, in the short boy, film. I bet those costumes are very exciting. <laughs> so we have that to look forward to. Um, He's he's still he's 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 still in Serbia. He's still in Belgrade, uh, or Belgrade. Um, he posted a video like uh, two days ago of him at his factory in in, in Belgrade. So he's he's still there. Um, and I, I relocated him there back in December. So he's absolutely still in uh, in 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 Serbia. Yeah. Um, YouTube channels, podcast, short film. He shouldn't have YouTube channels. So if we can get those down, I don't know if 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 we can bully YouTube enough to take those down, that would be good. Yeah. Um, because they really shouldn't. They really shouldn't have that. Do better. I mean, YouTube. Yeah, do better. Also, ha- good luck with your podcast. I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, <laughs> good luck with your podcast. Podcasting solidarity, of course. Yeah. That's the most important thing. That's basically all I have on uh, Robert Rundo and Rise of that Movement and their fashy lifestyle brand that they're trying to develop and sell very bad t-shirts for and Rhodesian shorts. Yeah, I mean... Critical support to Rhodesian shorts. Um, <laughs> real, all right, everybody. Real helpers of the cause. <laughs> this has been Behind the Bastards. Uh, we'll be back next week with more terrible people, and at some point in the future to talk about Julius Avola, uh, or maybe to talk about ITS, which is you're all going to really enjoy learning about when when that becomes appropriate. So to exciting! Talk about. Yeah, I'm really, really not thrilled about. Yeah, I mean, I see Avola stuff, Revolta tr- tradition stuff. Um. When we get more people, fascism, baby. Yeah, it's ecofascism. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a real issue. It's gonna and... kill somebody. Someone listening to this podcast knows. And don't forget to follow <laughs> Garrison on Twitter at Hungry uh... Bowtie. At, at Hungry Bowtie. And if you want to buy better fitting T-shirts, you have a T Public store. So I have heard. Oh my god! For behind yes. the bastards. And the, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And a hundred percent of our profits go to not a Nazi. Funding my gym membership. All right. That's. I don't... Hi, uh, Garrison Davis here with a little, a little hot, steamy Robert Rundo updates. Sorry, I, I don't know why I phrased it like that. Um, but we, we do have an update on um, our not friend Robert Rundo um, since I recorded the first few episodes of this back in January. Of course, that that was before the the siege at the Capitol and a whole bunch of stuff has kind of happened since then. Um, starting with starting with Rundo himself. It was reported in February that uh, here I I will just read a headline uh, from Global Voices. It's also reported by various other news outlets. This is this is legit. Uh, Here is the headline: "Quote: Serbia expels U.S. neo-Nazi after investigative website Bellingcat outed his location." So uh, Robert Rundo has actually been kicked out of Serbia uh, during February, which is really interesting. So. He is not going to be allowed to stay in Serbia anymore. He is not. He's he, and he's he's presumably not there at the moment. We'll still need to figure out where he is in the future. But he will probably not be in Serbia because he's not, not he's not allowed to be there anymore. Now there's some various other places around the globe that he could be trying to stay in, uh, the U- Ukraine nearby and Russia. So, uh, so that 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 is that is very interesting that he is no longer in Serbia after. Months and months of reporting from Bellingcat uh, showing that he is still there. And then I, I still confirmed in December that he was still there. So that is that is uh, that's really interesting. Of course, it's, it's always good to know where guys like this are. Um, but, you know, this this is good for the people in Serbia uh, and the people in, in the city he was in that he's not going to be there anymore. That is that is that is good. The other interesting piece of. Uh, rundo information and uh updated intel that we have is that then in march so the following month the appeal to reinstate his uh rioting charges 
was granted. So the uh, the federal charges he has against him are now able to be prosecuted against um, once again. The the uh, the uh, ninth ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals uh, ruled that the uh, the federal rioting act does not violate free speech, and that the charges that he was um, the charges charges he was charged with do not do not actually violate free free speech laws. So they uh, went back on the 2019 ruling that a federal judge made, which is very um, you know a- appeals on the federal level are not very common for them to be granted. So this is this is really interesting that he is gonna that he is he possibly might go to trial um, now on these rioting charges. Let's see, and so like these rioting, char- I know back in 2018 there was it was like 600 days from the time that he did those violent assaults and then got arrested and charged for it. So now it being like 2021, I don't know how many. That's oh so many more days. It's more than twelve, more than one, more than like it's probably gonna be more than one thousand three hundred or one thousand four hundred days since he did these violent assaults and is actually gonna go to if he's gonna go to trial for them, it'll be you know upcoming here. So that's that that's that's it's been a long time, but it it is uh it is nice to see that he will be facing some consequences for him you know randomly attacking people in black hoodies. Um, and beating children up on the ground. So those charges are reinstated. So th- those, those are the two main Rundo updates. Now, again, we don't know where he is at the moment. Um, he could, you know, best guesses are Ukraine or Russia. They have different extradition rules, but we're not sure if Ukraine and Russia is going to let him stay there. I, we, we, know, we know he has friends there, but I'm not sure what the government's going to do if, when they, if they find out that he's, you know, trying, trying to live there. So that's everything on the Rundo side. Um, on the other, on the other side of things, remember are also not friends at Revolt Through Tradition, the kind of uh, fashy traditionalist youth group inspired by Julius Savola. They have now been um, pretty effectively deplatformed after the January sixth riots at the Capitol, and I mean more than riots, they were trying to you know do a fascist coup. So. All of Revolt Through Tradition's websites, um, YouTube channels, uh, social media accounts, all of them have been yoinked. They're all they are all gone. The they the really the only ha- really the only thing they have left is their Telegram channel, um, which makes recruiting much more difficult. So it is fantastic to have them not be given, you know, their Twitter, Facebook, um, and <laughs> YouTube platforms as well as their website, which was honestly a well designed website. So that it is very good to see that happen. Um, this is, you know, this is a great example of an effective use of deplatforming. No one really is making a big deal out of it. No one, you know, it's not, it's not like it's a big show. It's just, yeah, quietly these things are getting taken down. And that makes, that makes the, uh, th- that makes the recruiting possibilities much more, much more difficult. Uh, speaking of YouTube channels, let's check Rundos. So Rundo still does have some of his YouTube channels up. Um, I know he had a lot, but it looks like some of his previous ones have been deleted. Um, but that's not, you know, that's, so that's, that is good. That is good that he has less channels now. <laughs> he has less videos, but still, he still does have at least, at least two channels up um, right now on on YouTube, uh, I think all yeah, Media to Rise and documentary series Media to Rise. So his his main channel was taken down. That's great, uh, but we still have these other channels that he's trying to you know um, uh, recruit off of. So that that is the status of Rondo and Revolt Through Tradition at the moment. Um, Revolt Through Tradition is kind of in shambles because they don't know what to do now that they basically have no internet presence that normies can see, and. Rundo's looking for a new hope because he's been kicked out of Serbia. So that's that, that, that's what's happened since then. You know, not enough information to warrant a whole other episode. I just thought I would tack this on to the end. So have have a wonderful day, um, the rest of you beautiful humans. Don't 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 try to do a fascist coup and then have your Twitter accounts and YouTube's deleted. And don't start a fascist uh, clothing company. Doesn't doesn't seem to work out well. This this is Garrison Davis signing off.